So before we move on here, let's just put those little slats in the bottom. Okay, we could, you know, extract these out of the mesh by extruding some polygons, but that's going to take a lot more edges than what we have, and it's really not necessary for something like this. We can just, you know, simply make these out of maybe a couple of additional uh, oil tanks or boxes. Okay, so you can see we have uh, five there. So let's just create this quick. Another thing you can do uh, if you really want to, it's not really necessary, is quad up the bottom uh, of this. If you want to connect these verts up across, the, you know, the center this way and then this way, you could get quads in here, but again, uh, we're not getting any smoothing errors because that's completely flat. Uh, so that's really not necessary and it's probably not worth the extra polygons it's going to take. Okay, so we're just going to leave it like this. But let's go into the top view, hide, unselect it. And we'll just drop down here to edit poly so we can see, you know, the center edge. Alright, and let's grab maybe... Let's actually disable that turbo smooth first. Go back into create panel, let's go down to extended primitives, and we'll just use an oil tank for this uh, so we can kind of have these rounded over. Uh, if you want, you can use a box, it really doesn't matter. So we'll grab an oil tank there, back to the front view, let's go zoom in on the center, right about here, and we're just going to draw this out, give it some length, and a little bit of a rollover. Okay, we'll move this back into position here. And let's just put it right about here, I think. And we'll give it some extra uh, height. Okay, I want that to be, you know, roughly even from the top and the bottom. Maybe a little bit further back. Just gonna shorten it up a little bit. Okay, we'll take the radius down a little bit more. And if you want to round out these corners, you can just take up the cap height to round that over. Okay, so let's just right click and convert to server poly now. Go back to the front view, zoom in on it, and we'll just delete off the bottom polygons. We don't really need to have this. And then if we want to give it some thickness, we can just actually uh, extrude the bat bottom border down. Okay, so let's we'll go to border select that and shift drag it down slightly. Okay, we'll also move it down so it's sitting on the surface. And it looks a little too thick, so let's crunch it a little bit more. So again, in the front view, I'm just going to scale it down a little bit on the Y. Okay, and again, this isn't really not a big deal. You can, you know, probably even skip this out if you want to. Okay, so let's uh, center the pivot here by going into the hard tab, effect pivot only, and center to object. Turn off the button, and we want to have two of these on each side of center. Okay, so let's shift drag this over on the X to maybe about here. We'll do two copies. And on the reference here, you can see this uh, one here is a little bit longer than the middle. It kind of goes up and then down. So we'll just scale these a little bit more. Okay, so let's scale this guy here up just slightly on the Y. And this one down on the Y. Okay, I'm just going to move that a little bit more up there, too close to this bottom edge here. So let's grab all three of these. Maybe not the middle one, let's grab these two and we'll just kind of center this to those edges there, right here and right here. And I'm just going to move this up slightly as well. All right, good enough. But we don't want to spend too much time doing this uh, minor detail. Okay, so let's center the pivot point on all three of these. Okay, and we'll just mirror this over onto their side. So with this guy selected here, I'm just going to go to Effect Pivot Only, turn the button on, and then we're going to align the pivot point from this object to this object. Okay, so with that on, I'm going to go up to Align and click on the first one. Choose Pivot Point and Pivot Point on X, Y, and Z, and OK. And then we'll grab this far one here, and just still have the button on there, and we'll just align that to this one quickly too. Same settings, and OK. Turn that off, and I'll just let us mirror these over uh, evenly. Okay, so we'll select the middle one there, do a mirror, copy on the X, and a mirror, copy on the X. Okay, so everything's nice and even. Okay, and we'll just throw that black color on there. 
and we'll put our uh, orange shader on there. Okay, so that's going to take care of that base part for us. All right, we'll re-enable the turbo smooth on this piece, and we should be able to go on this piece. All right, so let's unhide all, and we'll figure out the length. Okay, I think we're okay on the height right now. All right, let's grab this and hide it. Okay, and I think we'll probably want to actually move uh, this up a little bit so it's a little bit more closed up. Uh, but I think we'll do that later on once we have the rest of the, the spout part built. Okay, so let's unhide all there. Okay, and we're looking pretty good. Um, so we'll just move on to the next pieces here. Okay, and let's maybe start working on some of the top part here uh, in the spout section. We have quite a bit of detail that needs to fit in here. Um, if you look at it here, you can see we have a, a couple of extra pieces that kind of come down and fit together to create this base part. Um, this bottom part here is going to be a little bit more complicated because we have a number of screw holes as well as these LEDs, um, lights that are cut into the surface. Okay, but let's start working on this part here. Uh, and this will be, you know, really easy for us to create. So what we'll do is we'll go into the top view. Let's get rid of this tray part first, just so we don't have to look at it. So we'll hide that. Let's also hide these slat pieces here. Okay, so we'll go into the top view. Again, we'll zoom in on that center section. And let's create this out of maybe a cylinder. So back into standard primitives, down to cylinder. And let's create this right in the center. Bring it up something like that. Give it a little bit of height. And we'll just line this up in the other views. Okay, we also don't need to have height segments on, so we can just uh, right click the spinner there to take those off and move it up. Okay, we want this to kind of fit inside that other piece there. Okay, and right now it's obviously too big, so let's crank down the radius. Okay, I want it to kind of fit in like that. Okay, let's also up the sides. Let's do like maybe 40. Okay, we'll just play with the radius there. Okay, we want to make sure it's also centered. So you can align it or you can just, you know, manually line it up with the horizontal and vertical edge here. Like that. Okay, I think that looks uh, about what we want. Let's check the uh, length in the side view. And again, you know, these blueprints aren't exactly awesome, so it's going to be very hard for us to see you know, how big that should be. Even if we have it moved down, it's, it's going to be hard to tell. So we're just going to eyeball this again. Okay, we don't want it to be too thick, but something like that looks good for starters. So let's maybe convert this to a poly. Go into polygon, we're gonna delete off the top polygon we don't need. And let's actually delete off maybe the bottom polygon as well. So we just have the side edges. Okay, and then we'll go into border, grab the bottom border. And we're just gonna scale this down in the top view. Okay, so I'm just gonna scale it in to give it a bit of a taper. And we don't need to go that much, so let's crank it back up a little bit. Maybe a little bit more. Okay, I'm just looking at the actual machine here on my desk and I think that's too thick. So we'll just move that border up a little bit to shorten it up. Okay, that looks about what we want. I think it's a little too tapered still, so let's scale it back out just slightly in the top view. Just a bit. Okay, I think that's about right. Okay, so now what we'll do is bring in that bottom border to create this piece here. Okay, and again, this other piece fits inside that, so we just wanna bring this in enough uh, where we can jam this other piece in later on. Okay, so let's grab the border again at the bottom. And in the top view holding shift, we'll just scale that in to extrude the edge. Okay, maybe a little bit more here. 
And when you scale in the perspective, you make sure you get all three axes there. Okay, you definitely don't want to do it on just one like this, I'll just go to squash it. Okay, so make sure you get it right in the center and just bring that in. And that's a little too thick, let's take it out. Maybe something like that. Okay, we want to support this shape here, so I'm just going to maybe add some support edge. We could also chamfer this down, but let's do one here by bringing these edges and connecting it. And we're just going to slide that down to the bottom. Okay, and the reason why sometimes it's better to use uh, edges rather than chamfering the actual edges, if that makes any sense, is just so you can, you know, uh, adjust the hardness of the edge later on. If you chamfer it down, you're kind of locked into that and it's, uh, you know, there's really no way to go back unless you're going to redo it. So if you have just an edge here, you can, you know, slide this around to adjust the uh, hardness of that edge or that bottom um, corner. Okay, so we'll do something like that. Let's do another one underneath. And we'll just take that in a bit. Something like that's good. Okay, and just so we don't see up through the inside, let's also extract the inner border up into the inside by just shift dragging it in just a bit. Okay, like that. And then we'll just uh, quickly support this edge as well. So we'll ring on those inner edges. That looks good. And one on the underneath it again. I think I'll just bring that to the other side. And then we'll, we should be good to go here when we smooth it. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, so the next thing to do is to start creating these inner pieces here. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more difficult to do. Um, you can see we have it kind of extruding out the back and it's kind of fit around the inside there. Okay, so it's going to be a little bit more different, difficult and a little bit more work, but we'll get it. So let's we're going to the left view here, and I think we'll just leave that for now. I'm still not really looking, liking the way that looks, but we'll adjust it later on once we have the other pieces in. Uh, let's go into the top view though first, and let's get rid of some of these objects. I'm just going to uh, control click these pieces here, and then we'll hide everything else. Okay, so hide, unselect it. Okay, and let's start this inner piece with another cylinder. Alright, so back into the create panel, grab a cylinder draw it out here and I'm just going to take it up roughly to there for now and we'll give it a little bit of height and we need to figure out you know um, how to fit these two pieces together so let's move this up inside the other piece okay we'll leave it just a little bit below it and then we'll just adjust the radius here so it fits inside all right so let's dial this down Okay, maybe just a little bit more. Let's do about 122. Okay, and we'll just pull that down just slightly a little bit more. All right. Okay, and for this piece, um, we don't need a lot of detail on it because most of the stuff is built out of a separate uh, part here. You, it's hard to tell in the pictures, but these are actually separated into two different uh, pieces. Okay, so what we're going to do here is go back into our scene. Okay, we'll select this piece here and let's go into the left view. We'll drop down into edit poly, go to polygon, and we're going to grab all the polygons on the back side of center. Okay, so everything on the back side there. And we can delete these. We don't actually need to have those in. We only want this front part. Okay, and this part's going to kind of cut the fit around this. Okay, so that should still smooth correctly for you. Just like that and we're going to need this inner piece to be a little bit more thick uh, to kind of fill this void here all right so let's just collapse it down to edible poly and we'll just pull the verts up okay so i'm going to take it up to maybe about there okay and then we'll go around the side here at the back back into polygon and we'll just select these uh, side polygons here. Okay, so just everything from that cut around to the other side where the cut is. Okay, and then we'll go into our top view and we'll extrude these out by local normal. Okay, we're gonna need to do quite a bit here uh, to kind of fill that void. Okay, let's actually take it all the way. 
maybe to right about there. Okay. All right, now we need to do some adjustments here so that uh, this isn't sticking right through. All right, so let's maybe grab some birds here. And we're just gonna pull these back again. You know, a lot of this stuff is on the inside, so it's not really gonna be that noticeable, but we'll try to get it as close as we can. So let's put on our edge constraint again, and we're gonna grab these four verts here, as well as these four verts here, and we're just gonna move these back on the Y. Okay, we wanna angle that a bit. Okay, and we'll bring the height down so it's not clipping there. Um, we could take it back further, but I think we wanna keep it a little bit more close to this front piece. Okay, so let's adjust the height back into the side view. Bring this down, whoops. Let's make sure we don't have edge constraint on. Grab those top verts and just pull it down a bit. Okay. So now what we need to do is create a void here for the next piece to fit inside of, all right? So the easiest way for us to do that is just to probably inset these. And I'm just gonna space these verts out a little bit more here on the sides. So let's grab these two, as well as these two, put our edge constraint back on, and just slide those up. All right, so it's a little more even. And then we'll go into polygon here. And we don't need the top polygon, so let's get rid of them. Grab everything, deselect the bottom and sides. So we just have the top selected, delete those out. And then we'll go down to the bottom here, and let's maybe, let's maybe just inset it. Okay, so I'm gonna grab the bottom polygons. And we're going to do an inset to create uh, this little bit of thickness we have here. Okay, so inset, take that up. Okay, it doesn't need to be super uh, thick, so let's do maybe around eight or so. And okay, and then we'll extrude these up inside. Okay, I want to do this by group and with a negative amount. Okay, and we'll just push that up. Um, maybe roughly three quarters, it really doesn't matter. Um, you're not gonna see this. Okay, so let's hit okay to that. Okay, now give us a pretty nice piece there that the next piece can fit inside. Okay. And to create the next piece, it would be easier for us to, you know, use these polygons here rather than trying to create this exact same shape again to fit in here. All right, so let's um, select these polygons here, just the bottom ones on the inside and we'll detach these as a separate object. Okay, so uncheck both objects, or both boxes and hit okay. And we'll just throw another card on there so we can see some separation between it. Okay, so now what we'll do is just support this outer shape first before we move on to the next part. And we can just do that with a couple of extra, you know, edge loops here. All right, so let's um, ring one of these bottom edges, connect it up with two segments. And we want it to be a little bit rounded over, so I'm just gonna do them in the center there and I'm slightly gonna move them down to round over the bottom. Okay, so let's move that down with the move tool. And let's make sure we have the edge constraint off first. Just slightly move it down. Okay, now I'll just round over that edge for us all the way around. Uh, now that those bottom polygons are detached, we could actually probably move the inner polygons here down a bit. We don't need to be that high. So I'm just gonna select the border there around the inside. Okay, I'm just gonna move that down with the move tool to shorten it up. Okay, we'll leave it like that. And to be on the safe side, I'm just gonna add one extra edge here on those inside polygons. Okay, so another ring, another connect, one segment. Slide that down a little bit towards the bottom there, just to tighten it up. Okay, and let's do the same thing on the outside. Let's ring this edge and connect and slide that guy down to the bottom. Okay, now we could add edges here to support this, but let's maybe just chamfer these edges Okay, I'm gonna select this one, I'm gonna go over to the other side and control click this one and loop them. And then we'll just chamfer this over to round it off a bit and support the shape. Take that up a bit, let's add an extra segment there. And we'll do maybe two or three. Okay, we'll do the same thing on the inside edge here to support that one. Okay, this one here. So I'm just gonna grab an edge there, go over to the other side and grab an edge here. Okay, so we'll loop those. Okay, just these two here. And we'll chamfer that the same way. And okay. 
Okay, so now we have uh, enough support edges there, so this will hold the shape when we turbo smooth it. So let's put a turbo smooth on with two iterations and ice line. Okay. And let's just unhide all here and we'll see how this is fitting. Okay, later on we probably will need to scale, you know, some parts up just to fill some of these gaps here. We don't want it to be, you know, too wide apart. But again, we can clean that up later on. Okay, so let's just add that black color to these. And let's throw our shader on there. Okay, we're getting there. We still have quite a bit of work to do, but... Uh, we're looking okay.